Welcome to the Workforce Solutions Northeast Texas presentation of Application Basics. Today we will be reviewing more than a formality, including first impression, be prepared, and make it complete, practice, including common questions and reminders, questionable questions, and authorizations. Things to consider, such as school history and past employment, and finally, do or do not, things to do, things to avoid, and electronic applications. It is our goal today to answer any questions you might have had about applications. A job application is your introduction to an employer who wants to know who you are and what are your capabilities. Many people do not realize how important the application is and tend to not take it as serious. These job seekers tend to go to gather multiple applications to complete and take back, unprepared to talk with the employer or even present themselves in a positive and professional way. This is a huge mistake. Applying for a job starts when you walk through the employer's door or access their website. A good application will help you make it to the next step, the job interview. When you complete the application, the goal is to get you an interview. We review in our Interview Basics Workshop all the aspects of an interview. However, each person you interact with when picking up your application should be treated as your next supervisor or the one making the hiring decision. A poor appearance, a rude personality, or a lack of attention to the employee, employer can hinder your chances. How you present yourself may prove as important as the information you put on the application. Just as in the interview, your personality is your main selling point when talking with employers face to face. Be prepared. Some applications are long and detailed, others are short and simple. Generally, the more responsible the position, the more in-depth the information will be. You should be sure you are interested in the company and the job before you arrive to fill out your application whether that's in person or online. Learn about the company and the position before your visit. Wasting the interviewer's time on a job you do not want will not leave a good impression on the employer for future positions. When you apply for a job, go alone. The employer wants to see you, not your parents, friends, spouse, or children. If at all possible, go by yourself to pick up applications or complete applications. If you are getting transportation assistance from a friend or family member, remind them that you may be in the employer's building for up to 45 minutes to complete an application, so they should be prepared to wait. Ask them not to come in with you and to refrain from coming back and forth to talk to you. Applying for a job is an individual process and you need to demonstrate that you are independent and ready to work on your own. Make it complete. Some job seekers have trouble remembering all the information an application asks for, so they simply skip over those parts they've forgotten, leaving blank spaces throughout the application. Blanks in your application can hinder your possibility at an interview. An incomplete application may cause an employer to think you are forgetful, lazy, or inattentive to detail. Prior to filling out any information, Write out or type out your work history with full addresses, supervisors' names, contact information, dates worked, short details of your job, and the reason you left. Put your information on index cards to carry with you. Some employers do not allow cell phones out in their place of business, so with it on paper, it won't interfere with any rules they may have. This also shows that you were prepared and ready to complete the application ahead of time. It is much easier to transfer the information than to rely on your memory. Plus, if the information on your cards match what you are stating on your resume, everything the employer is receiving is the same. Practicing before you go. 1. Pay attention to the order. Each application is a little different. Pay attention to the order they ask the information. Two. Check the calendar. Know the day's date prior to going out to complete applications. If you have to ask the HR rep the date, you will be showing that you are not very organized. Three, 
how long have you lived in a particular place? This gives the employer some idea of how long you are likely to remain in the area. All employers like a steady workforce, and job turnover is definitely an issue. 4. Have your social security number with you. All jobs require your social security number. Know it or have it readily available. 5. Be specific. You should know whether the position you want is one available with the company. Never put anything down. Employers want job seekers that want the job they have available. 6. Full time equals 32 plus hours per week. 7. Be realistic. Many entry-level positions only pay minimum wage. The more experience and job skills you have, the bigger the salary you can expect. 8. Your job performance in the past. If you worked previously for the employer, your past performance can indicate how you will work in the future with the employer. 9. Give a specific date or time period. If there is a reason you are not available immediately, have a specific date you are available to note here. 10. Make it clear what hours or days you can work. If you cannot work on weekends, nights, or specific days, please be specific with the employer to ensure they have positions for you. 11. Be honest. Remember, some employers really prefer employees that are flexible about the amount of time they are willing to work. 12. Where did you hear of the job? Letting the employer know about where you found the position. 13. If you have limits on travel, state what those are. Some work may require you to travel, distances could be 50 plus miles away, and employers don't always reimburse for those expenses. Stating if you have any travel limits can help the employer if they are requiring travel. 14. Provide details on which licenses you have. If you happen to have a CDL or bus license, note that if space is available. 15. Age restrictions can affect those at various ages. The Federal Age Discrimination Act prohibits discrimination on the basis of age with respect to individuals that are at least 40 but less than 70 years of age. People under the age of 18 are prohibited from performing work that is potentially hazardous to their health. People under 16 may have to present working papers. Those under the age of 21 are not allowed to touch or sell liquor or other controlled substances. 16. Proof of citizenship. Employers can be prosecuted if they knowingly hire illegal workers. 17. List only disabilities that would impact the job duties. With any disability, it is not a requirement to disclose, but a disability that could interfere with work duties will need to be known by the employer to ensure they have the correct assistive technology and accommodations needed to allow you to do the job effectively and efficiently as possible. 18. Give the name of a person who knows you well and can be contacted during working hours and that may be able to pick you up or meet you at the hospital. Giving them the name of someone in another state that could not be here within a reasonable time frame may not be of benefit to the employer. 19. Include any continuing education classes you've taken to improve your job performance or satisfy licensing requirements. 20. If you attended more than one, give the last college attended or as many as space provides. 21. 1 equals freshman, 4 equals senior. If you graduated, list 4. If you left before graduation, list the last full year you completed. If you have a GED for high school, note 4. 22. If the question doesn't apply, put N slash A as with any question. Never leave a blank on your application. 23. Listed here if the courses you took are applicable to the position you are applying for. 24. Just like number 20, if you attended more than one, give the most recent. 25. 
Are there any special courses you have taken? Certificate-based courses should be the only ones listed. If you did not receive a certificate, license, or degree stating you completed, do not list it here. 26. What do you do in your spare time? Do you belong to any organizations that demonstrate your overall maturity and responsibility? Are you a member of an organization that is job-related? If you hold an office in that organization, be sure to mention that as well. If you helped with a large project or organizing an event, mention that also. Be sure to exclude those that are specific to race, creed, sex, religion, or national origin. 27. Do you have any interests or hobbies that are job-related? If so, mention here but limit to just those that are job-related. 28. Be sure to list your most recent job first. 29. If they are interested in you, an employer will probably want to talk to your former employers. Make sure you provide the correct phone numbers and save them from wasting their time trying to track down your previous employers. As mentioned earlier, having that information on an index card can ensure that you have the correct information each time. 30. Make sure the information you provide is accurate. Do an internet search for the company contact information, use the phone book, or review the company website to ensure you provide the correct company information. Again, preparing the index cards ahead of time can ensure you have the accurate information you need every time. 31. Unless they were summer jobs or are the only positions you have held, do not list jobs that lasted less than three months. Don't agree with this. 32. Name the person who oversaw your day-to-day -day activities. 33. Increases in salary are a sign that previous employers thought you were doing good work and wanted to keep you around. 34. Be as specific as possible. Do not use abbreviations in your title. 35. Provide as much detail as space allows. Make sure to include any duties that have a direct bearing on the job for which you are applying. Refer back to the index cards mentioned earlier or your resume. 36. Be honest and factual. Do not criticize other coworkers or the previous employer. Limit the response to just facts. 37. If you are currently employed and your current employer is unaware or might frown upon your job hunt, you may want to state that they cannot be contacted. Many employers will understand if it is a current employer. Other than that, if you refuse on other employers, it may place an undue shadow on your past work history if you refuse to allow them to contact other employers. 38. When giving references, do not include close family relatives or any employers you have already listed. The people you choose as your references should be able to speak favorably about your character, reliability, and responsibility. Choose carefully and notify them that they may be called. Past coworkers, supervisors not already listed, and other management personnel that worked closely with you should be your primary options. 39. How do you know this person? Or what was their job title? 40. Again, be prepared. Know the numbers and ensure they are accurate. Have the numbers and information for your references available on the index cards as well. 41. The longer you have known someone, the greater weight their opinion may carry. Be prepared for questionable questions. There are a number of questions that may appear on an employment application which you may legally choose not to answer. Almost any question can be asked as long as it does not relate to race, color, national origin, or religion. Many employers avoid questions relating to age and gender, as these too may be interpreted as discriminatory. The only exception to this rule would be if an employer could prove that they need the answer to such questions, so they could demonstrate the presence of a qualification needed to do the job. There are multiple areas you may choose not to answer, which are concerning your arrest, 
credit references, your mental health status, any disabilities that would not need an accommodation, your military discharge status, or your overall height or weight. Questions asked of an applicant must only attempt to identify their ability to do the job. Questions which fall outside this sphere are illegal. Though these questions can be illegal, employers may ask if they are able to prove that they are job-related and not intentionally discriminatory. Ask for clarification before refusing to answer. You do not want to disqualify yourself because of a misunderstanding. Any question that is not within this spectrum should be answered or the blank should have an N slash A noted. Also be prepared for authorization forms. Most employment applications ask for your signature at the end of the application. Your signature means that you accept responsibility for the information you've provided. It also gives the prospective employer permission to check the information you've said is true. All authorization statements make it clear that false statements are ground for firing. Be honest. Employers take this seriously and do check to see that you provided factual information. If some of your information turns out to be false, you are likely to be terminated, whether you've been doing a good job or not. Some applications are simple, cut and dried. Others require more detail. And some with small companies may be informal and personal. In those cases, you need to be prepared to provide that more personal detail. Does your school record affect your chances? Your school attendance record may be the only gauge of your reliability that is available. Though you may know you're a better worker than a student, there's no reason for an employer to just take your word for it. If you are a recent graduate who did well in school, use your past performance as a selling point in convincing an employer of your ability to do well at work. If you did poorly in school, be prepared to explain why that was the case and what you have gained from the experience that can be used in a positive way in the future. How should you talk about past employment? You should be honest, but not too critical. If you have had difficulties, explain how you've learned to do things differently. Don't just say, I didn't like the work, or I didn't like my boss. An employer will think you won't get along with him or like his job either. Should you let a potential employer talk with your previous employers? If you say you'd rather not have such a conversation take place, the prospective employer is going to wonder if you're hiding something, and no employer will hire someone who can't be trusted. If you have a definite reason for not wanting to have a previous employer contacted, you need to offer an explanation. Should my references be people I have vetted? Absolutely. You should be able to know what your references will say about you, and it is even okay to coach them a little to let them know a specific employer may be calling and that you would appreciate them giving them a good reference. Be sure to ask them to be very positive about your work ethic and your dependability if that is a strong suit for you. Ask them to refrain from any negative comments or familiar stories as well. There are definite things to do on an application and some definite do nots. First, know the position for which you are applying. If you write anything, you probably will get nothing. An employer never posts a position for anything. They have a particular position they want filled. So be that person that particularly wants to fill that position. Print neatly. Employers will probably not take the time to try to figure out what words are that they cannot read due to script writing or poor handwriting. Fill out the application completely. Any questions not answered, forgetting to sign your application, lack of a fully completed application, may cause the employer to think you did not pay attention to completing the application, or the position may not be one you are fully interested in. Be honest. We mention this multiple times, as everything on an application is reviewed, is verified, and is checked. You may come to regret anything you put on your application that is not true. Think about your answers before you write. No one wants to read a crossed out word or half completed sentence. If you get a duplicate copy or practice completing the application prior to filling it out, 
you should get to where you can complete the application quickly and easily. Read all the instructions first. Reviewing the entire application before filling out the application can save you time and effort. There are some employers that strongly focus on your ability to follow instructions, using even the application as a test. One specific employer goes as far as stating on the application that it should not be filled out, just signed, and a copy of your resume attached. Therefore, any completed application is instantly filtered out. Some do nots. Don't fold or roll your application. This shows a general lack of concern and respect about how you present yourself. If a wrinkled, rolled, or stained application is the best you can give the employer, the employer will expect that the poor work will be what they will receive from you on the job, too. No employer wants someone that does not show pride in their work. Don't use a pencil to fill out your application. Pencils are not considered businesslike, and further, they can smudge and become unreadable. Don't smoke, chew gum, or eat while completing the application. If you feel the need to do any of these and you are still at the business, refrain until you are away from the business. Refrain from smoking and eating while completing or returning your applications. Don't use slang, abbreviations, or text message lingo on the application. Slang and text abbreviations is informal. They should be used outside of an employment-seeking situation. Abbreviations might be widely known within your profession, but not all abbreviations are universal. Spell out any abbreviation the first time you use it, and abbreviate it after the first usage in parentheses. Because an application is part of a formal process, your use of wording and abbreviations should be more formal and appropriate for the setting. Use multicolored inks. Many applications require either black or blue ink only. If you have the choice, use a blue ink pen. Black writing on a black and white application blends in with the writing. The blue ink will stand out more and call a little more attention to your information. Even small companies are requiring job seekers to fill out applications online. The instructions are clearly spelled out on each website to ensure all can apply equally. You will use the same information as if you were filling out the paper application, but there are some things you would want to be prepared for. Note your ID and password for the company site. Each employer will have a way for you to log in to their application site. Note this information so you can log in again to complete a previously started application, follow up on previous applications, reapply to other positions, or to complete assessments that may be required. Be prepared for computer problems. Not all applications are created by the same person for the same computer systems. Some applications may require different programs or updated versions of software that you may not have. Other times, the system you are using may have bugs in the system. Be prepared for these errors and other problems and give yourself more time than needed to complete an application. If using a workforce system, please let the front desk staff know if there are any technical problems, as we may need to contact our information technology or IT department to correct some of these errors. Save often. Each time you are given the option to save and continue or save your progress, use it. This will help with any issues that may arise as your information will be saved up to that point. If you choose not to save and continue through the process and your last step has an issue, you may be required to restart the entire application process. Have your resume electronically. This is a must for any online application. If you know you will be applying online to any business, an electronic copy of your resume in either Word or PDF format is a must to have. If you do not have an electronic application, we recommend attending our resume creation workshop or walking through the resume wizard in workintexas.com. Either method should give you the tools to create a resume electronically. Be prepared for assessment tests. 
Many online applications are requiring assessment tests, and they can range from a simple assessment that might take five to 10 minutes to a more full assessment, which may require two hours of time. Many of these are a way for the employers to filter and sort through applications that may not meet their requirements. Be prepared for some of the assessments that may ask repetitive questions in multiple ways. This is a test to ensure you would answer the question in the same way each time as well. We hope you end this video feeling much more prepared about filling out a successful application. Thank you for taking this time with us to learn about creating the perfect resume. For more information on Workforce Solutions Northeast Texas, please visit us at netxworkforce.org.